Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, this is a tank. Uh, it's a panther, a Tamiya. Uh, panther Mark V, I think it is, um, in 135th scale. And, uh, yeah, it's something... I don't often do tanks, you may have noticed. Tanks are not really my thing. Uh, but I'm going to build this one. So, and there's a there's a good reason I'm going to do this, and I'll cover that in a second. But uh, yeah, this is what we're going to do. So, let's get on with it. Right. So this is our our panther. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's not too big. Basically, there's um, I'm going to waffle for a minute. If you don't like it, you can fast forward it or or don't. I don't care. Um, I have this weird uh, way of, of, of choosing what I'm going to build. Uh, I don't really choose a project. A project chooses me. Uh, what generally happens is I'll get the urge to build something. Uh, and it's like, for example, this is why on my Patreon channel, for example, I don't offer as one of the tiers uh, the ability to choose what I'm going to build. Because the thing is, if I'm not in the mood to build whatever that thing is, I can't, I, I, I literally can't do it. I can't get my head into doing it. So I tend to build very much on a whim. And the other day I had the urge uh, to build a tank. So I went to Hobbycraft and I bought this. Uh, just as an aside, I also bought these guys as well. And I'll explain more what's going on with all this in a minute. But, um, so I bought this panther. I, I must admit, I went in there and I looked at the tigers. And, and my first, I, I actually picked up a king tiger. And then I thought, do you know what? Everybody builds tigers. I'm not building a tiger. I mean, I might do at some point, but not not this one. Um, so I got this panther instead. And um, I then had a second thought, because occasionally I have thoughts more than one at a time, funnily enough. And I did the video a little while ago uh, for the tank museum uh, that you may or may not have seen. I'll put a link in the in the thing, whichever corner it is. is that corner, I think, right there. Anyway. Um, so, it occurred to me that this might actually be a bit of a double-edged sword, uh, or kill two birds with one stone. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this tank, I'm going to paint some figures, I'm going to make a diorama, and then I'm going to auction it off uh, for the tank museum. Uh, because it's a worthy cause, so that's what I'm going to do. Because quite frankly, once I've built this thing, I really have no interest in keeping. <laughs> and uh, so, rather than having to sort of find somewhere to put it and trip over it for evermore, um, one of you lucky people can buy it and and have it, you know, display it in your house or in your toilet or wherever you like. Um, and also, it'll benefit the uh, the tank museum. So yeah, so that's why I've got these figures. I'm not going to do these in this video. These will be these will be in a separate video. So basically, the idea is, or the rough idea at the moment is, we're going to build this, which will be one, possibly two videos. I, I don't know yet. Uh, then I'm going to paint the figures, uh, and that will be another video. And then there'll be another video of actually building the diorama, which may or may not have some electronics in it. I haven't decided yet. And when that last video comes out i will announce the details of the auction and then you can go and bid on the thing and i will post it to you and you can have it <laughs> basically and the tank museum gets some money which is brilliant so yeah um so yeah let's uh, let, let's get on and build this thing shall we <laughs> it's kind of funny. I just thought I better have a read through the instructions before I start because uh, I've never built one of these before, and uh, it's like all the instructions are in Japanese. Uh, I thought well, that's going to be fun, but then I uh, I looked right in the bottom of the box and there's a set of instructions in English as well. <laughs> so that's uh, that's made life a little bit easier. But anyway, um, I think I'm going to do this in a slightly different uh, way to what they've suggested or the way they've got the instructions laid out because 
basically what they've said is assemble the lower hull, put all the wheels on, uh, assemble the turret, then assemble uh, like the top of the uh, like the, the top of the hull, and then put it all together. And I think what I'm going to do, and if you're an armor builder, then feel free to jump in the comments. Um, but I think I'm going to I'm going to assemble the lower hull. I'm not going to put the wheels on just yet. Um, uh, I'll do the turret and I'll do the top of the hull. And then once I've got those kind of discrete sub-assemblies, then I'll figure out the best way to put it together. Because obviously I'm going to have to paint everything before I put the wheels on. Uh, all the wheels will have to be painted, obviously. Um, I've got a good trick for that. I'll show you when we get to that point. Uh, so, yeah. I'll put the, the bottom of the hull together. I'll put the top of the hull together. I'll put the turret together. And then we'll go from there so let's start by assembling the lower hull uh, so I'm just uh, cleaning up the exhaust pipes and everything to put them together I think what I'm going to do I have they, they're just dry fitted at the moment I'm going to drill the ends of these out and, and make them a bit more pipey um, I haven't put uh, the jack in the middle yet because that needs to be painted separately I think um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill out these, the ends of these uh, exhaust pipes before I go any further. So what I'll do is I'll just get the point of the knife in the middle like that and just make a little divot like that. And then I will get a pin drill and drill that out. Like that. And then what I'll do is I'll just use progressively larger bits to drill it out to the right size. What I don't want to do is drill in so far that I go right through the end of it. I'm going another millimetre or so. What I don't want to do is stick it through this and straight into my finger. <laughs> right, now let's get a bigger one. Stop laughing at the back. Let's see if I can take a little bit more out of there. Yeah, there you go. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? I mean, if you compare that to this one, that looks uh, a lot better. Right, I'll do these other ones and then we'll um, stick them on. Okay, so that's the exhaust drilled out, and we can put those on now. That's the other. I say there's a jack that goes in the middle but I'm not going to put that on yet I'll um, I'll leave that for now so that's the back panel now this claims to now put this in here but I don't quite understand how it how it goes in uh, Is 
is, is that it like that it's a bit of a it's quite difficult to keep this under the camera it's so big stop laughing at the back um, I don't know if that's how that's supposed to go or not Uh, oh, this is the trouble, is trying to sort of dry fit it together and it's such a beast of a thing, it's um, difficult to get it, you know, all in one go. Let me see if I can get this so I know where everything's got to go and then we'll see if we can figure it out. <laughs> Right, so according to the instructions, because I've been trying to figure out how the hell this thing goes together, um, it says after fixing D1 on D2, so D1 is the lower hole, D2 is the upper hole, so you slide this in at the front, stop laughing at the back, and then I couldn't figure out how this back panel went on. But it says here that once the hull stop A32, which is this piece, is on, then it should fit up against this tag on the back of the back panel. So let's try that. Oh, this thing is a faff. <laughs> uh, right, so that goes like that. So let's glue that on. So, and what I am going to do is trim that because there's, I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually an ejector pin right on that bit. I mean, I'm assuming because they couldn't get this bit out of the mould, probably. Um, but let's just get rid of that and clean off the top of that because there's a big divot in it. Okay, so now that to one side let's pop this in here like that there's a hell of a gap at the front there look um, hopefully that will go away once we get the back in place and then this that's getting rather windy out there I don't know if you heard that Blimey, I thought the roof was coming off the shed then okay this is interesting uh, right that goes in there like that and then that should go like uh, that I think oh this is the trouble it's like I say as soon as you look at this thing funny it just falls apart there are no locating pins or anything at the back so it's just really awkward to try and get it together Right, that goes like that, and then, oh, <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. Right, so I think, I think I've got it figured anyway, I think what needs to happen is, there's this little like hook bit here, and I think what happens is that needs to go basically like that, as far as I can tell, that goes like that. So, we'll go with that. And if it doesn't work, then we'll throw a tantrum. <laughs> right, here we go. I'm going to glue it on. I'm, I'm done now. I'm gluing it. I am committed. Or I should be. One of the two. Right, so that goes like that. Right, we'll let that set up for a minute. And then we'll see if we can get the top of the hole to fit. 
like I say, it's just a dry fit to start with. I just want to make sure it all goes together. So, but I think basically that needs to go like that. Yeah, so that, that seems to be about right. Right, so I think we're okay with that. So, I suppose we can start putting the suspension together. Or should we start working on the top of the hull? We'll start on the top of the hull, I think. Okay, I've just been putting together some of the... Uh, the sort of ancillary bits and pieces to go on the sides of the hull and whatnot. And I'm gonna try a little experiment here. This is the, um, uh, the, the gun brace uh, that's used to, to hold the gun in place when the tank's being transported on a train or something. Uh, and it actually has, uh, this part actually opens and closes on a little, a little hinge, but it's just a pin that's, uh, that's, you know, there's no, nothing to hold it in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try a little experiment. And I've got a little cheap screwdriver here. This came from the pound shop. <laughs> it's kind of funny actually, because if you look, you can see the end of it is silver. And what they've done is instead of hardening the tip, stop laughing at the back, uh, they've just painted it black, <laughs> which is, I find hysterical. Um, so it's, it's not much good as a screwdriver. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna warm the, the, this up with a blowtorch and see if I can just kind of, just peen the end of that pin slightly to hold this part in place. If it doesn't work, it doesn't matter, but it would actually make this gun bracket um, functional. So I'm gonna, I'll just warm this up quickly with a blowtorch and we'll see if it works. Okay, let's see. Shouldn't need a lot. Whoop. That should be enough. I'll just clean up the edge a little bit with the knife. And yeah. You see that's that will now allow that to turn, but it won't come off. And so hopefully. Oh, this is kind of awkward because it's not in place on the vehicle, but that should stand up like that. And you can actually like put it under the gun and close it over the gun. <laughs> I'm quite pleased with that. Yeah, good. Right, uh, so I'll do a few more of these bits and pieces and then we'll start putting them on the hull. So I'm just starting to attach a few bits to the hull. And uh, one of the things that's interesting is this, this front hatch, because in the instructions it calls to fit uh, this part first, which is like the hinge, and, and it goes on the inside. Uh, and it says to attach these two hinges, put this on and then put the uh, the hatch on the outside and that seems a bit weird for me because it's you're relying on getting this perfectly positioned to fit the hatch so to me it makes more sense to put the hatch in the hole oh he says with it not going in the hole to put that like that then put this on here like that and glue that in place and then put put the hinges on afterwards because then that way it all lines up so I'm going to do that I mean to be honest I, I could just um, glue the hatch on because it doesn't really matter because this just allows you to open and close the hatch which I'm not really that fussed about but if I put that like that you see then now if I can see what I was doing where are my glasses now I can put this in here like that and glue that on 
and then put the other one on the other side like ugh, that and glue that on and at least now I know that the hatch is in the right place see that makes a lot more sense to me than doing it the way they tell you to do it. There you go. Because at least now I know it shuts properly. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, that's that bit done. Uh, what else have we got? Right, now this is something else I noticed. This is um, uh, the, the, the front hull machine gun. And there's a a pin there that this fits on so it goes like that basically and one of the things I noticed is that if I put that on that pin and try and turn it over if you look in there it's not in the middle it's nowhere near in the middle so I don't quite know what's happening there but if you look at the way this is in there it's not anywhere near like central to where it should be <laughs> it's kind of a bit weird it's like the pin is I don't know if, if the pin isn't central let's have a look yeah you see that pin isn't lined up with the middle of that hole it's it's slightly off to one side which is a bit rubbish so I think what I'll do is I'll just elongate that hole slightly before I put it on so what I'm doing, just using a, a pin drill of the of a, appropriate size, and just basically just use that to elongate the hole a little bit, and then hopefully I can get it in more or less the right place. That's a bit better, you see, like that. At least it's more in the middle. I might even give it a little touch more. I think it'll be alright like that. Right, so let's put this in. So that needs to go like that. And like that. Like that. Right, and we can glue that on. And probably spend the rest of the build knocking this gun off. <laughs> there we go, that's better. Right. Uh, I'll put a few more of these bits on and then we'll um, we'll go on from there. As I say, I've got like all these bits to glue on the sides and whatnot. So, so I'll put those on, and then we'll we'll come back and uh, see what it looks like. And while I'm just doing this, I'd like to take a moment to thank my top tier patrons, Amy, Neil, and Howard, for their continued support. It is much appreciated. Thank you, guys. Right, I was kind of hoping I wouldn't have to do this, but I don't think I'm going to have a lot of choice. Um, one of the problems with this model, which I've noticed increasingly, is the moulds aren't very good. The moulds are worn out, basically, and what that has happened with a lot of these parts is that the, the moulds are actually misaligned. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but the two halves of this handle, for example, are misaligned. So when it's been when the moulds have been pushed together, instead of being pushed together like that, they've been pushed together like that. So they don't line up properly. And as a result, you can I don't know if you can see that very well, but you see that what looks like a bit of flashing is actually 
the two halves of this piece are misaligned. Now, that means that they're going to be, it's going to take a lot of cleaning up to get these parts to fit properly and they look awful. So in this particular instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these handles with this. Now this is a piece of one millimeter copper wire. Um, and it's something you can do uh, if you have a model, for example, that doesn't have handles or doesn't, you know, the handles look nasty or whatever, you can use copper wire or lead wire um, to actually replace them. And it's very simple. Uh, you just take a piece of uh, wire like this, take a pair of pliers and just bend it like that, you see. The tricky bit is getting the length of the handle correct, especially in this case because it needs to fit in a specific place. Um, so I'll use this one to measure it and then get hold of it like that and bend it that way and that is the right size and then we can just snip it off and stick it on with some super glue. So I'll cut it off and I always find a good trick with these is to cut it off slightly longer than it needs to be and then trim it down. So it's about there. And make sure it's the same on both sides. Like that. Now I'll make the other one in a minute, but just to show you. So these handles go on here, and hopefully this handle should fit. Right, that's a touch too long. I've made it slightly too long. But to be honest, that might be that the part itself doesn't fit very well. But what I can do is just, just tweak those ends in slightly and take that slack out of it. I mean, if you're going to do it properly, really, what you should do is, um, you know, get a ruler and measure it. <laughs> I'm too lazy for that. Uh, like that. And what I'll do now is I'll stick that on with a bit of super glue and uh, it gets rid of the need to use those nasty um, plastic handles. So little tip for you. So now I've got that. I'll just dip the ends in some super glue and pop that back in and let it set up. And I'll say I'll do the other one as well. So a lot of the other handles on this actually weren't that bad, but these two were particularly bad, so I'll just replace those. But as I say, it's one of these things you can do. If you've got, see some models, they don't come with the handles and everything, so you can use a technique like this to make your own. So, Or if you wanted to, you know, uh, make a, a variation on, a, on an existing model and so on. It's a good little tip. Right, so um, that's the hull just dry fitted together. Uh... I think I've got everything on it, but one thing that's puzzling me slightly is uh, there's a big hole <laughs> in the back of the deck here, and I don't know what's supposed to be there. There's, there's no mention of it in the plans as far as I can see, but okay, we'll worry about that in a, in a, in a minute. Um, but uh, I'm not putting the spare bits of track link on yet because I'm going to paint those separately. Um, so, but yeah, that's not looking too bad. One thing that is concerning me slightly is there's these grills, you can see right through them. So what I might do is I might get some, um, I've got some mesh, some fine mesh, and I might put that over the back of these just to block those holes off. But I'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, yeah. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish the assembly of the uh, the undercarriage or undercarriage the drivetrain, um, and then put the turret together. Okay, so we want 
this on here. So it's got these <laughs> these rods that go right through and it's weird because it says in the plans not to glue them but it's like although this isn't a motorized model it seems like I mean obviously it's got all the bits inside for where the motors and everything would go and it seems like some of these parts are designed to allow the wheels to turn and so it's a bit odd but yeah it says don't glue them so I won't but it just seems a bit a bit weird to me, but still. There you go. Alright, let's stick that one in there. Because it's like these bits here. It says to put those through like that. And then put them put these on and to stick these to stick the these like cone shaped bits on but not to glue these parts and let them spin free which seems odd to me because quite frankly there's no reason why you couldn't just stick this on like that and then just put that in from the back so why put it together first it's just it doesn't make a lot of sense because this is where I'm going to do it I mean, quite frankly, I would glue these parts on, but I don't know if it's if it's whether it's to make the putting the tracks on easier or what. But it's there are some strange <laughs> instructions with this model, and I don't quite understand why. But oh, I'll just drop that on the floor. <sighs> oh, where did that go? Found it. <laughs> oh, it's got all fluff on it. Oh, see, this has got all flashing on it as well. Yeah, so these moulds for this kit seem to be quite old. But, there you go. As I say, once these bits are stuck on, you can take these little pins and just put them through from the inside. So I don't understand why it wants you to put them together the way it does when you can just do that. It just seems weird. But still, never mind. Um, so... I suppose the next thing we've got to do is figure out the wheels, which is going to be fun. But I've got an idea for that, so watch this space. Uh, I mentioned earlier about covering up these vents. Uh, so what I've done is I've just cut these pieces of, of mesh to go over it. Um, this actually came from a frying pan uh, splash guard that you that I got from the pound shop and <laughs> it's kind of comical because <laughs> it claimed on the packaging that it was made of stainless steel it's like this is not stainless steel this is if anything it's aluminium but it's definitely not stainless steel but anyway uh, you can get like two of them for a pound so uh, they're a great source of, of cheap and quick uh, mesh so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to super glue them over the insides of these vents just to kind of block them a little bit from the outside. So again, this is Pound Shop super glue. So I'm just gonna basically put some, a few blobs of super glue on, like that. And then, we take one of our bits of mesh and we drop it on there and just 
let it stick. So I'll just hold that there for a minute later on. But you get the idea, and I'll cover up the other ones. And then from the outside, it just, um, there's not such a gaping hole. I'm really not sure what this hole is either. <laughs> I can't quite figure out what that is, but there's a big hole there, and I don't know why. But anyway, um, so yeah, I'll leave these to, uh, to dry. And um, I think then we'll move on to the turret. Right, let's get this turret put together. I think I'll do the gun first. Because you can get all kinds of aftermarket parts for these kits. Um, you know, gun barrels and whatnot, but I'm not going to uh, not going to do that with this one because I have neither the time nor the inclination or the money for that matter. Oh, this doesn't go together very well. Oh, really? Oh, this is going to be good. Well, I'll tell you what, there are some parts on this model that really, really don't go together very well. Well, this is going to need a lot of cleaning up, that much is certain. Which is going to be fun because it's actually textured. So yeah, God, I think it would have been easier to have just cut the uh, so-called locating pins off and just uh, just stuck the two halves together. Quite. All right, let's let that dry, and then we'll have to clean it up. Oh dear. Right now, that goes over. Which way up does that go? That way up. So that goes over the outside of that. Like that. And then that goes in like that. And then into there. Uh, of course, the question being, how am I going to glue that in there? Right, we have to try a different. <sighs> Let's use this rebel contactor. do is we'll put a little drop of glue in there and a little drop of glue in there like that and then right, let's take that out of there put that like that Drop that in there, like that. I'll try and get those holes to line up. There we go, that's it. Like that. Okay, let that dry for a minute. Uh, right, I've got to stick that on there. Oh, 
come here. go on top like that. Oh, it would help if it didn't have these big ejector pin marks on it. Good grief. Oh. <laughs> Are we having fun yet? Uh, right, let's get that. Right. At least that will hold it for a second while I try and get it in place. Like that. Oh, it's moved. <laughs> Couldn't have put some locating pins on it, could you? No, that would have been far too simple. Right, there we go. That's got that. I'll tell you what I'm going to do as well. I'm going to glue this hatch shut. Oh. Of course that won't go in once that ring's in place. Because obviously it won't. Yeah, I'm not going to have this hatch open. Because uh, in this particular instance I'm going to have all the crew outside it. Now we can glue the bottom on. Make sure we do it with the ring facing out, because otherwise we're going to hate ourselves. Ugh. See, what I'm going to try and do now is get this on without knocking that ring off. I should have put that on afterwards. Now we want this rear panel. And I did check this beforehand, I have to say. Like that will go in like that. Still move. Just about. And now that goes on the front like uh. Let's just shave the edge of this a little bit. I just dry fit all this together and it fitted perfectly. Now I put glue on it, nothing fits. Now it's all kind of pulled together with the glue. It, nothing will fit. Oh, hang on, that's why. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I see what the problem is now this here where this is sticking out of here it's hitting the sides of the opening for the turret for the for the gun oh <laughs> good grief So we shall make some modifications. Right, 
now it fits. <laughs> what I've done is I've just cut some out of the out of the side there to give those uh, give space for those things to go. But that's really bad that that doesn't fit properly like that. Oh dear. Right. Okay. So I need to line that up with the bottom of there, and then we can glue it in. Build a tank, they said. It will be fun, they said. I imagine all the people watching this who build armour all the time are probably laughing. <laughs> At my escapades. Uh, now I've got to stick all the little fiddly bits on, so I'll, uh, I'll do that and then... Uh, We'll come back and see what it looks like. Right, so uh, the turret is pretty much done now. Uh, you will notice that the gun barrel is grey. Uh, that is because, uh, as you may have noticed when I was putting it together earlier, it didn't go together very well. And I have spent a lot of time, literally a couple of hours, filling and sanding and, and cleaning up this gun barrel to get it anywhere near looking half decent. Um, it's still not perfect, but it's it's a damn sight better than it was. Um, the rest of the turret is fairly okay. I did, <laughs> I did actually have a change of heart and I went back and I've actually uh, opened up... Oh, I can't open it now. Um, opened up the, uh, the hatch again uh, because... I've decided that when I put the figures on, um, there in the set that I've got, there are two commander figures, and one of them is standing in the in the turret hatch. So I thought I'd use him. So I did actually open it up again. Uh, you may also notice the elephant in the room. <laughs> I try. I, I cut that um, handle off of the uh, frame, and it just it just fell to pieces. Um, so I made another one out of a bit of the same copper wire as before. Um, but yeah, that's the turret done. Although there are two holes here, which I'm assuming are for some kind of a handle, but there's no mention of it in the plan, which is annoying. I mean, I assume, I might actually try and see if one will fit, that one of these handles actually goes here as well, because I think there is one left over. And I think it's just an omission in the plans um, but I'll see if I, I'll either put one on or I'll just fill those holes up uh, so yeah that's the turret and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna uh, wrap this video up here because it's getting quite long stop laughing at the back and really I've got to a point now where I need to start painting things and I think it would make sense to do the painting and final assembly as a separate video. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. So let's, uh, let's wrap this up. And here is our, for now, finished article. Uh, this has been uh, tricky, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, I'm not massively familiar with building armour, certainly not at this scale. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's gone together. I mean, it's, it's one of these things that as you get so often with these like older kits, the molds aren't very good. Um, and it can cause all kinds of issues when, when you're, you know, putting the thing together, but you know, it's getting there. Uh, I managed to get the, uh, the gun brace working, uh, as I'd hoped to. So that was, a uh, that was good. Uh, we've made some copper handles, which was handy and uh, <laughs> excuse the pun <laughs> but yeah it, it's coming along so as i mentioned in the next video we'll look at uh painting the thing and uh the doing the final assembly so yeah hopefully you guys are uh, enjoying this little foray into armor building um do feel free to come and join us in the staff canteen on facebook and uh should you feel the urge to support me on Patreon, that would be greatly appreciated. So, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully you're enjoying this a little, uh, the first in this little series, and I'll um, see you on the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers. Bye.
Thank you.